If you watched my last video on robotics, link of which is in the description, you'll remember we talked about coordinate transformation, breaking it down step by step. In this video, I'll walk you through what forward kinematics is, and we'll go over a solved example to really understand how it works. Suppose this is our robot, then simply put, forward kinematics is like figuring out where the tip of a robot's arm, which we call an end effector, like a grip, ends up when you translate and rotate each of its joints in a fixed coordinate frame. Assume we have a robot with three main parts. Link 1 of length L1 attached to the base, link 2 of length L2 connected to link 1, and an end effector connected to link 2. Now, in order to perform forward kinematics, the very first thing you do is follow these three steps. First draw a fixed or global frame F, which is attached to the ground like this. Then draw the end effector frame, which will be the moving frame M3 like this. If you don't know what F or fixed frame and M or moving frame are, then please check the previous video. In the third step, we assign moving frames to each joint or link. To do that, we make the x-axis of the moving frame parallel to the link it is attached to. Like moving frame M, one will be assigned to this link one, and therefore, first make it aligned with the previous frame like this. Then rotate it in such a way that the x-axis of the moving frame M1 will be parallel to this link one. We rotated it by an angle theta one with respect to the previous frame F in counterclockwise direction, because remember, I told you that positive rotation is measured in the counterclockwise direction. So we follow that convention here to keep all transformations consistent. Now do the same using M two frame at this joint for link two. Keep it initially aligned with M one frame then translate it at this joint, and then rotate it by an angle theta 2 with respect to the previous frame, M1 in counterclockwise direction, like this, such that x-axis of this M2 frame is now parallel with link 2. Excellent. Now, x-axis of M2 will be this line, so theta 3 rotation for the end effector frame. M3 will be like this. After this is done, now if there is an object placed at some position, small x, with respect to the end effector or M3 frame. And if we have the position of the same object as big X in fixed frame, then forward kinematics is all about finding big X given small x. And other robot parameters, such as length of the links and their orientations, like all theta 1, 2, and 3 in this case. Before we proceed further, Keep in mind, I will not place these arrow signs over the vectors, just to keep the notation clean and easy to follow. Instead, I will show them using bold letters. Great. Now suppose the same point has position vector y with respect to m2 and z with respect to m1. Then using coordinate transformation, I have already shown that y equals r 3 small x plus d3, where r3 will be this rotation matrix and d3 will be l, 2, and 0 because d3 represents how much the origin of frame m3 has translated relative to the origin of the previous frame m2. Since link 2 lies along the x-axis of frame m2, the translation happens only in the x-direction by a distance of l2 and there is no movement in the y direction. Similarly, z equals r 2 times y plus d2, where r2 will be this rotation matrix, and d2 equals l 1 comma 0. This is because translation from frame m1 to frame m2 happens entirely along the x-axis of frame m1 by a length of link 1, which is l1. Hence, D2 captures the shift of origin from M1 to M2, as L1 units in the X direction and 0 in the Y direction. 
Lastly, big X equals R 1 times Z plus D1. This will be R 1 rotation matrix and D1 will be 0, 0 because the origin of frame M1 is the same as the fixed frame, so there is no translation. Combining them, we get this. This is how we now have big X, represented completely in terms of small x, and all the rotation and translation components from each frame. This equation is known as forward kinematics, but we are not done yet. I will make it more simpler. Remember I said that we would represent the transformation using a single matrix T by combining both rotation and translation? Right now, we have separate R and D components at each step. To turn this into a proper homogeneous transformation, we need to express everything using 3x3 three three matrices and 3x1 vectors, just like we discussed in the previous video. So now, we'll rewrite each individual step, from small x to y, then y to z, and finally z to big X, using the homogeneous transformation matrices T1, T2, and T3. Each T matrix is a 3x3 three three matrix that combines rotation R and translation D. The matrix looks like this. The rotation matrix R is in the top left 2x2 two two block. The translation vector D is in the top right 2x1 column. Then the bottom row is 0, 0, 1. So T1 will look like this. Note we have theta1 here in the rotation matrix and this is 0, 0, because our D1 is 0, 0. Then T2 will look like this. This is the rotation part, and see how the translation part has L1 and 0 here, and finally T3 will look like this. Using these, the forward kinematics position can be found by multiplying the matrices. T equals T1 times T2 times T3. If you multiply all of them together, we get this T as this matrix. The final transformation matrix T beautifully combines rotation and translation into one compact form. The top left 2x2 two two block represents a single rotation by the sum of all three joint angles, theta1 plus theta2 plus theta3. The top right part of the matrix gives the position of the origin of the M3 frame or the end effector, expressed in the fixed frame. Finally, we have big X equals T times small x. Okay, doki, let us solve an example. Assume we have this two-link robot in this orientation. Length of this link is three units, and the length of this link is two units. This angle is 120 degrees. Then this angle is 45 degrees, and this angle is 60 degrees. Using only this information, let me know the position of the origin of the end effector in fixed frame F. Are you done solving? Okay, now let me show you the solution. It's simple, right? We almost have all the information we need. L1 is 3, and L2 is 2 units. We just need the values of theta1, theta2, and theta3, and plugging them here, we will find the T matrix. The first step is assigning the fixed and moving frames to the links. But don't worry, I will not bore you by going over that again. It will be like this. Now, theta1 is simple to find. It is this counterclockwise direction value, which will be 120 degrees. Now, for theta2, we might think that angle between x-axis of m1 and m2 is 45 degrees. So theta2 will be 45 degrees. But that is incorrect, because we, we go from M1 to M2 in counterclockwise direction. But this 45 degrees is in clockwise direction. So theta2 will be this angle and not 45, which will be 360 minus 45, or 315 degrees. Again, don't fall into the trap of considering theta3 as 60 degrees because, just like before, we have to think about the rotation from frame M2 to frame M3 in the counterclockwise direction. The 60 degrees shown here is in the clockwise direction, so the correct theta 3 will be 360 minus 60, 
which is 300 degrees. Now that we have all three angles, and the link lengths L1 is 3 and L2 is 2, we can plug everything into our transformation matrices and get the final T matrix. This will be our final T matrix. Now that we have the full T matrix, what exactly are we trying to find? We're looking for the position of the origin of the end effector frame M3, but we want that position in the fixed frame F. So what do we do with T? Well, remember, big X equals T times small x. And since we want the position of the origin of M3, that is, the very center of its own frame, its coordinates in its own frame, or small x, are just 0, 0, and 1, like this. So when we multiply t with this vector, it gives us big X that equals this, which will be the position of the end effector's origin in the fixed frame, and that's it. Can you verify the same for me using simple geometry? And see if the distance matches what we got from forward kinematics, and let me know in the comments. Now imagine this. Your robot is in this orientation. And what if we place an object somewhere on the table, say at this point right here, and we want the robot's end effector to reach that exact spot? How do we figure out what the joint angles should be so the robot moves just right to reach there? We already know how to find the position if we know the angles using forward kinematics. But now, we're asking the reverse question. Given the position, how do we find the angles? That's the big question which we call inverse kinematics, and we'll explore that in the next video. I am very tired right now as editing such videos daily takes a lot of time and effort, and thus I would request all of you to please like, share, and subscribe to this channel so that I can get motivation to make more of such amazing contents. So good!